meeting is called to order. The Ronnie Board of Education meeting is called to order. The Board of Education is in compliance with Chapter 231 of the Public Laws of 1975, titled the Open Public Meeting Act. The time, date, and location of this meeting was appropriately advertised by notifying the retrospect, as well as posting notices of Merrill Hall, Ronnie Post Office, Mary Bolt School, Line Bingham School, Grace Downing School, and the Ronnie Public School District website. We'll save the Pledge of Allegiance for our regularly scheduled meeting. This is a special session for the 2015-2016 public hearing for the school budget. Roll call board members. Ms. Adair? Here. Ms. Beebe? Here. Ms. Stevenson? Here. Mr. Pagliazzo? Here. Ms. Spalding? Here. Ms. Anderson? Here. Mr. Buckon? Here. Ms. Ferry? Here. Ms. Panzarello? Also Good present, call. oh sorry, also okay. present Mark Iannucci, Superintendent, Sean McCarran, School Business Administrator, Board Secretary. I don't see Mr. Jesse. Um, Mr. Winklespeck is around. I'm Butch Bruner, Supervisor of Building Grounds. We are ready for the 2015-2016 budget presentation. I'm not going to lie, this presentation is not much different, if at all, since what we saw last time. To be honest, there's a $13,000 difference of an increase due to special revenues that were altered after numbers came out from when it was originally presented to you. So it's going to be the same presentation. We'll go through it. If there's any questions, we can answer those questions for you. And then once it's approved, um, what we then have to do is we will post. The advertised budget has already been posted <coughs> to the public. That was last Friday. So that way they had time to review the budget for next year. We will then be posting the user-friendly budget, which you have a copy of in front of you, onto the district website, which we, all school districts in the state of New Jersey must do that within 48 hours of presenting their public hearing. So basically it was the same as, and again, I'm not going to read it slide by slide like we did last time. Just so you know, we do all have it in front of us, correct? Yes. yes. Everybody has you have the, the entire PowerPoint and the user-friendly budget. Okay. I have two. So if you weren't here for last time, this might be good. If not, just bear with me now. I'll try to be quick. Field you know, any questions as we go along? Say something, please. Uh, when we began to start the budget in October, um, we with the building administrators and everyone else to identify what the needs are. Um, then for about three months, October, November, and December, um, you know, all those people are working with the staff to identify the needs and build that budget and submit the proposals. Um, Right after the first of the year, those budgets are submitted, and Dr. McCarran and myself will review those budgets. Uh, and then Sean has the fun job of constructing that budget with his office to determine all those you know, impacts and make sure that we're adhering to the um, We did the tentative budget presentation back in February in order to be submitted to the county office back in March. Um, we were one of the first, I believe, in the county. Sean went down to meet with the county VA because they set up a little bit differently this year. Um, we have a new county VA and he likes to do it kind of face to face so you can kind of avoid any of the uh, emails back and forth. You're not first or late, stop it. Exactly. <laughs> Last year, um, I worked with Earl Vassallo, who was the interim business administrator, but it was done via email. So anytime there was an adjustment, that was communicated via email and it would be multiple emails. So you were constantly trying to address different things before you would get the approval. In this case, you literally sat down and off the desk, you both had your computers out. You were making, the only issue was the system going down, but that was on either one of our faults, but the software itself, so. Um, so it kind of takes us up to this point right here um, with the public hearing, which needs to be held um, you know, toward the end of April and the first week in May. <coughs> Questions so far on the development? No, not yet? Good. Okay. So we went over last time consideration for the budget as far as educational goals, community support, uh, what our enrollment looks like. Our enrollment is it's actually growing, which is a good thing. Uh, anticipated revenue coming in and upcoming costs and needs. And then you see the, the district goals that we had there. I'm not going to read that word for word because you have it in front of you. The major initiatives would be um, revision to the math program. Instead of doing it by grade level, we want to do a full district rollout. Um, I was able to work with Pearson, who has the Envisions program. So that way, since we are a small district, it's very difficult to do a one-time payment. 
for across the board, so they were actually able to spread it for us um, across the two-year period, so that helped us financially on that end. But um, through, that'll be one of the initiatives that all teachers will receive PD on before they leave at the end of this school year, and then on the first days that they come back. So when teachers leave at the end of this year, they'll receive all the teacher manuals um, for their grade level. When they come back, they choose to review it over the summer they can. When they come back, they'll have another PD taking them into it to start the year off. The Chromebooks will be expanding to four grade levels instead of three. So it'll be grades five through eight. Um, and then of course, we will be continuing collaborating with Black Respect Regional for multiple services to kind of build that cohesion between the two. The year after that, are we going to have uh, four through eight? Is that what's that our plan? Fourth grade is kind of up in the air now. What we are looking at is possibly, since our iPad carts are no longer under warranty, okay. um, those are going to start fading out as they get broken mm -hmm. because to fix them is equal to purchasing new ones. So we're going to have to start looking to see what technologies we're going to be bringing in. But at that point, we'll be in full function mode in terms of the Chromebooks. So we'll have the four grade levels, which will then free up that money to then start replacing it at other grade levels. Ideally, we'll have Chromebook carts in third and fourth. Um, in speaking with staff and also administration, we kind of feel like for K-2, the tablets are a little bit more easier to function. Students will still have exposure to Google Apps and things like that through their um, computer technology class and when their teachers take them to the lab, and there will be carts available. But we feel like third and fourth, like to try to expose them more to the keyboarding and to um, make them more familiar with the devices, but we also want to expose them to other um, operating systems as well. Obviously, our food service and education work on things like that. Um, enrollment, I know that's changed a little bit since the last time we met. We're up to about 860 kids, roughly, um, which is a good thing. As well as our school choice kids, which are capped. We're capped at 11. We have nine this year, however, two of them, they're no longer increasing school choice numbers. Two of the students were our students to begin with, so by us keeping them and calling them unfunded school choice students, they automatically increase our cap. That number 11 will never decrease moving forward, so as students graduate, we'll then be able to accept other students into the program. So next year, we're accepting one student into the program, and as we've talked before, um, March has said our numbers are increasing. So the availability that we have, we're only opening things up to certain grade levels because what we look at is since there's four sections per grade level, any grade that hits 88 is shut off because we want no class unless it's our own kids to be above 22. If you talk to other districts, many districts are facing issues where you're hitting 27 to 30 students in a class and we really don't want to do that with students coming in only if there's availability. And the next slide, or the rest of the slides, we're going to talk about obviously technology and curriculum updates as well as the facilities. Uh, I think we talked last time about what's going on this summer. Uh, all three buildings, we're going to go into that more in depth as far as the roof and the windows. <coughs> and then obviously we're trying to maintain the programs that we have. And also we're looking to expand some of the programs we have, uh, whether it be educational or extracurricular wise. Because honestly, if you don't have a child in Volts, 
you wouldn't know what they are. And I think as board members that they should see what we're spending. So when someone says to us, you know, hey, what do we do for our kids? Well, it's easy to say, well, we do A, B, C, D, and A. So that, you want that just for summer? Hmm? Yeah. Did you say you want You're that right. for summer or all, all year? Like the whole year. The whole year what we offer. Sure. That well. falls under that. I know we kind of had that done already. Just, just tweak it. That's or fine. we can condense it into yeah. one. That's it. Sure. Uh, I'm going to let Dr. Karen talk about tax levels. Because that's the tax What tax levels? Okay, here we go. Um, for this year, we remained at the 2% cap, which um, is the maximum amount we are allowed to increase the local taxes without needing to go out for a vote. So some school districts who go up 8, 10, 12%, depending on what's needed within their buildings, if they're underfunded for programs, they have to go out for a vote that's voted on in April by the community. Um, side note, school boards was very excited because 18 out of 19 schools who went out we're actually all approved for increase in the tax levy for those school districts. So that was a big accomplishment on the school board's end. <clears throat> no need for a public vote. As you can see, the difference is $135,252. So when you say local tax levy, that means there was the, the local what, the property tax? Property taxes. Yes. Is that affect the businesses too? Anyone who pays taxes within the community pays school taxes as well. So just keep in mind that when we talk about that, state funding and federal funding, in many cases, sometimes federal funding is decreased. State funding remains flat for the most part. We're only increasing the lo our local tax levy by 2%. So what we're trying to do now is maintain our current programs and what we offer our students by merely increasing our budget by $135,252. So when you take into consideration what salary raises are on an annual basis. Once we negotiate in those aspects, that doesn't cover that. So it's almost like you're constantly looking to see what's working, how can we refine our budget to make sure that things are able to function and that we offer the same programming for students. What percentage is the salary, do you know, of the total budget? So I guess salaries are salary takes up about a little bit 45 to 65% of the budget. Fair to say from the average rate. 45 if you're looking at just instructional staff, but if you're looking more at like 65 to 70 if you look at all staff members within the district. And I guess the average rate is coming right around there, around 2%. So that's usually based off. County average was higher this year. It was 2.8. I think it was 2.8. We came in right below it, but at the, but that's still above the 2% tax levy that we have. And that only touches on half of our budget we're looking at around a $13 million budget and we're only increasing 2% on $6,762,000. No. So when you look at the federal, they tell us to decrease our federal funds by 20%. So that way you're excited when you actually get either a little bit more or the same amount. And then for the most part, state funding has remained the same for the past four, four years. You do get excited. You're like, oh, we, we got more money. You're like, no, no, you didn't. You're like, no. So that's kind of where we are with this. And then total revenue is money coming in. Um, 13 million was last year's. This year, you'll see it's about a hundred, a one, one million, one point five million dollar increase. Don't get excited. That's the broad grants that we've been preparing for over the past couple of years for the new roof at Bowles for windows and doors across all three buildings that will be taking place over the summer and into the fall month. Um, we'll probably discuss a little bit more about the Rod Grants during the regular session since you'll see um, a number of the approvals that we're doing are for that. So the Rod's taking care of our capital improvements? Yes. Not of our own revenue? Say that again. The Rod is a grant? The Rod Grant, yes. It's not a loan? No. It's free money? It's free money. So we so provide that. It's not our money that's yeah. doing the repairs. Well, well the roundabout way it is. Well, the roundabout way it is. The one point five money. The one point five million dollars is running me money. There's another one point six million dollars going into it that's being funded by the state at the state level. So this is over three million dollars for the roof, windows, and doors. 
So, and we have all the breakdowns for those numbers. Right, so. You need to provide a local share in order to receive the Ron grant. Otherwise, you don't receive the money. So is that, like remember, obviously, I know that you didn't have to do it, but you, you'll know what I'm talking about. So remember when they cut the budget out, right? And there was no money, and they stopped now giving, um, remember it used to they be like 50%, filled. and it was like if you did a new construction, you got like between 20 and 30. If you did a rehab, you got like 50% state money. Is the rod grant part of that money that like stopped, or is it not part of that money? I was, it's similar grant funding. Okay. But what I'll tell you is it's now only covering health and safety. So as a part of our rod grant that was submitted, we wanted to have a kitchen. And we were going to use one of the back rooms here at Bowles, and then we were going to ship the food out to the schools. It would have been fantastic. Um, Kathy would have gotten a sink over at Downing. It would have been amazing. So the fact is, it didn't cover health or safety. Therefore, it was cut out of the project altogether. And it was only roofing, which is why we then had to look, and which is why we're now with Black Horse Pipe, which we're very happy with. But, um, we had to we had 18 months once we received the grant to then bring up the local share so you already had money in reserves so each year as you were building those reserves and building that surplus sometimes people look at a surplus within a budget and are thinking oh you're high no one's hiding money it's all allocated for certain things but i can't just pull 1.5 million dollars out of your 13 million dollar budget to do a project it takes time to build those funds up so once this is all complete is the savings account depleted your capital reserves account, yes. So at the end of this year, in June, you will, what happens is in June, we start auditing all of our funds. And what will happen is, is that you will do a resolution as a board that will state that we are allowed to place up to $500,000, we won't have $500,000, into capital reserves and maintenance reserves respectively. So once we do the audit and we look at our fund balance at the end, and you remove the money that's necessary to balance next year's budget, and whatever you're left with from there, you, and you take out whatever's needed that's rolling over. So if we owe money, we then have to roll that money over into next year's budget as well. And then whatever money is left, we can then put into our reserve accounts. Okay. And then you let it fill. Right. Like we did. Right. And that way, if something comes up, um, you'll be approving a ton of shared service agreements today. Um, Sterling, High, Sterling High School, shared service for 1516. What are we doing with them? As of now, nothing. But they offer a lot of different services, so that way if a pipe bursts, and Butch calls, and a pipe won't burst, no, no. Um, and Butch calls, we want to have money in those capital reserve accounts, so that way we're able to fix the problem, and you already approved for us to do work with Sterling High School, with Black Horse Pike Regional, with all those other um, Affiliation. So that way, we don't have to wait for board approval. We have the right to just go and make the fix, and then you guys would be able to approve it after that. Any questions? Yeah. Okay. Um, anticipated tax from 15-16 budget, 6,897,852, which is reflected um, on the last slide. It's one dollar, one point three seven eight per hundred dollar of assessed home value. So the example is is that for a hundred thousand dollar home this year, it would be a total increase of forty three dollars. Of course, you would then break that down by your quarterly tax payments, which would come out to be about a little bit over under eleven dollars. Example: average home in Runnymede is one hundred sixty four thousand seven hundred eighty one dollars. $2,270.68 is paid in elementary school taxes per household, $70.85 average increase in elementary school tax. And then I pointed out elementary school tax because it is a regional school district, so therefore part of your school taxes go towards the regional as well. Completed steps, we have Board of Ed approval to adopt and file the tentative budget, that's what you did to, um, two meetings ago. Also, we worked with the county office to submit the tentative budget. Next steps, we're currently here right now for the public hearing. And then we'll be preparing the budgeting software for the 15-16 school year. So once it's approved, we use our budgeting software, which is Systems 3000. So that way all of our staff can submit their request for the 15-16 school year. We can prepare requisitions and purchase orders. 
send them out to the vendors prior to the end of the year so that when we come July 1, we can get all those orders in for staff for the upcoming school year and make sure that we're ready for September. Staff doesn't like it when you start talking about September. <laughs> They're like, well, let's talk about PD for next year. They're like, what? We're still in this year. Any questions? So I understand it better. So the, this one right here, with all the yep. numbers and everything. The very right front page, it just, that's just the head count. So basically, the pupils is how many students, correct? Yep. The second one, pupils on roll for special ed. That's all any kid that need any required in special education or correct. Third yeah. one, pupils on roll subtotals, just the sum of the two. Yeah. And, yep. and the pupils in private school placements, that would be what? Any outside school. So St. Teresa's would be an example of private school. So we're paying for four, there's four students that we pay for their tuition in St. Teresa's? You don't pay any school within the district, they are entitled to funding. So they receive non-public funding through 192, 193, they receive textbook nursing, um, they receive part of our federal grant money for so, Title I and Title II. So what do we do is so locate a certain dollar amount to the students and say, okay, they're getting $1,000 yes. per student? Well, it, it's not so much that student. way. There's a formula for every grant. Okay. So, for example, whatever's identified through, like, New Jer example, we New Jersey Smart is one of the ways that these numbers are identified, okay. and that pretty much tracks students across the state of New Jersey through an identification number. So, if your son moved and you went to Washington Township, let's say, when he enrolls, his name would come up based on his birth date, based on the information you give them, and he would have a unique ID number. Okay. So, therefore, all that numbers that all that money is then tracked to pay. So that would come October 15th when they take their snapshot of who's enrolled in your school. That's how your state funding is then formulated for the following year. So get to what, what the number four under pop yes. people, what is that representative to me? That's that represents that as of right now there are four students who are identified as being going. in private school placements. So the dollar amount for four students is then calculated based on that. So St. Teresa's would give them their full amount of students that they have. Right. They would receive more than just for the four. They would receive additional funding for those students. And based on that, we would then support them with that money that's needed. So that money comes out of our money? Yes. However, it's allocated for those students because it's a non-public school within our district. So we're acting as the local education association that's giving them the, we're the middle person. So we're making sure that they're compliant. When they put in requisitions and POs using those funds, it comes through our office. And if there's a problem, I'm the one who's calling to make sure that they're in compliance with what they're purchasing. Now, if I'm not mistaken, the next line is, that's the instance where you said if a child goes to this district, parents get divorced or something happens, and they have to move to another school, we pay for them to stay within the school if they deem it the best to the child. And right now, we don't have any, correct? Correct. Sent to other districts, regular. That's regular. If I'm not mistaken, we talked about that in the last meeting to me before you brought that up, where you said, well, no, we brought that was different. That was for school choice. Okay. And for school choice, we then get funding the following year for it. But in many cases, even if you move, we get funding if the child comes to our school once they move to another district. Like they'll get to give funds if a child is in our district, moves out. So if the child goes to a running school, right? Parents move early and decide to move. We decide to keep them here because it's the best interest for the child, even though they don't live within the town. I told that two zero zero. That's that number. Right? Yeah. Yeah, he's talking about homeless, that's what it sounds like. That's homeless. That's what you're saying. Yes. Okay. So, people sent to other districts regular. That would be if there was programming that we had to send a certain student for. So, as you can see, in the past few years, in 1314 and 1450, you have zero. Okay. So, for example, you might have had parents argue about the educational program, want to be able to sustain it if the student wasn't classified. The district sometimes will be responsible for paying for that student to go to another district. Okay, so that's the reverse. They live in running and we're paying for them to go to the school. Right, and that hasn't happened anymore. That used okay. to happen in the past. All right, and then special ed would be the same exact situation just with a child. That child. might be severely disabled. They have a certain disability and we don't offer we the program can't, for we the can't, We can't have, we can't educate them. And pupils received as 
what? People's receipts would be people's coming in. And in that case, you're looking at homeless numbers right now. So that's what it doesn't count as choice. Yes. Okay. Sam, you're going to have to cut me off when we run out of time for questions. Uh, we have plenty of time. All right. So then go on to the next page. And so you got the operating budget. This first page looks like the local tax levy. Mm -hmm. That's just from 2013 actual. So 2013-14, we had 6.63 million come in taxes. Correct. That is that was the total budget. Correct. Correct. That was the total local tax levy. You then also have federal and state funding. You have right. like different different federal money that comes to us, different money for different so six point eight million under subtotal revenues from local sources. That was the total of your tuition, of all those areas underneath. Okay. So that's not it either. Now you're asking so 11, the total operating budget. That's the way the the mm -hmm. So this is all your income, if you will, on this first page. Yes. Correct. Yes. Money coming in, revenues. Look at all of that stuff. We have aid from all different types of state sources. State sources we federal. have aid from federal sources. Yeah, so we have cash and stuff like that. I guess cash. I have to ask him again, just for, for things to jump out. So like uh, total tuition in 13, 14 was 170,000 down to 15 down to zero. Where are we at? Second line. We're As state. of right now, the total tuition from 14, 15 I can speak to was your preschool tuition. For students who get charged one hundred and fifty dollars a month for your regular ed students participating, that money's been moved down to zero because it was it was under the wrong count. So New Jersey has charging counts. There's the best places to charge certain things to. So one of the things we've been doing is looking at where everything's being charged to, and asking ourselves, is this correct? The correct line item to charge it to? And the answer was no. So you'll see fifteen thousand dollars under fifteen sixteen. Right. In another location. Well, I have to ask where that 170 go. That should jump into another bucket too, right? That could have been special ed costs. I don't have the 13, 14 budget in front of me. So you, but your one of the questions is why did we go why? from 170? So we can, yeah. Yep. So why? It's so fine. we can we can ask him that. He can get that to us. Absolutely. Like why did we make 169, 449, but. I understand what it sounds But like. we switch, but just, you just have to remember from the 13 14 to the 14 15, we switched right. business administrators. Right. And when we did that, we found that there was some errors in line, line items. Things right. were, were put certain places, but we'll, but we can have Dr. McCarran look into that and give us a specific answer. Um, but as of right now, like he said, so just remember, like in the past few years, we had a new administrative team. And we had a new business administrative team, and we had an interim. So some things might look, but you might look in other items, and, right. and that's well, where it will and be. That's what I was asking. That a different line item. Yeah, that 170 thousand. So when you're explaining, it sounds like it was 170 that we were collecting for whatever cost that was in a preschool bucket that should have been in a different bucket. Should have should have so, been put in different line so, items. So what? Where is so that prime example, 1314 was also a year for school choice. So instead of having a separate line for school choice, you're pulling in anywhere from eighty to ninety thousand. Easy. Look at that right. Look at right below revenues level. from state sources. See school choice aid. We had it at seventy three. Then it dropped down to sixty four for some reason. And back next year we're going back to eighty nine. So if we if you calculated all that, you would come up with that number. Is what he's saying. Like all the different areas that they're now in the appropriate line item. So I would think it's spread to one bucket. It got spread out to a, a few. few. So like that's it. That right there, that's like a sixteen thousand jump. So then, you know, you're, you're looking at like one hundred forty. Um, same thing with the unrestricted miscellaneous thing. It went from seventy three to twelve fifty, twelve fifty. What, what is the un unrestricted miscellaneous revenues that we were getting before? It seems like we took a large hit on. That's just money coming in. So if we received additional aid or support, and there wasn't a specific line that they knew where to put that money into when they received it, it could have been. Um, one big thing also is um, there used to be an ed job grant where every school district received monies to try and fill positions. It was a two-year grant that the state received. I know because my first salary as an administrator was paid out of that. And that being said, that was two years that the school district might have received an extra eighty to one hundred and twenty thousand dollars that they were receiving that money into, and then. What happens is after those two years, they want the district to then sustain that. But 
as we just said, sustain it through other means, find other revenues, find other ways. But the question is, there's not always the best ways to sustain it. So it's always difficult when you receive extra money and you know it's a one-time hit. You don't want to bring the staff member and say, oh, well, we're going to throw two more basic skills teachers over at the elementary schools. Because then what happens the next year when you don't have that money? You then lose those resources. Another example, like see other other state aids, it went from like 45, 68, and then he appropriated to 24, 499. There's another about 20. There's another about 19,000 too there. Just different. You yeah, know. so he said 16k there. You have 19. Yeah. There, there was four there. different people, Jeff. There was four different people in the lab in this interim in this time frame that decided. I mean. That I put money in different spots is what I'm saying. Like, so I mean, I I would only imagine that there's going to be a variance to some degree because of the fact that I mean, I mean just in my house alone, I mean, call the electric bill one thing, and do you know what I mean? Like how I would call it one thing, or if you go to a file cabinet and you file something under one way and they filed it under another, I would definitely imagine that there's going to be a discrepancy with that. So if you look. If you look halfway through where you see subtotal revenues from state sources, do you see that line? Uh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, from federal sources or from revenue state from sources. state sources. The one above that. Right in the middle of the page. Right in the middle. Yeah. You see in 13, 14, it was 4,850,000. Mm -hmm. And then in 15, 16, it's 4,860,000. Right. So you're literally only talking about a $16,000 difference right. between those two numbers in those two years. So the money is just placed in different areas. Right. And depending on when it came in, like the miscellaneous revenue is the one thing that would drive me crazy because it's miscellaneous, and that's exactly what it means is you receive certain funding and there's no specific number to attach to it. So it's, it's one of those issues. And then if it continues, then they might create a line for it and they might include it in as something that's extra. Prime example is they just added new account numbers to the entire budget for this year for sick pay because some districts are paying out on sick time of staff members and there was no specific line for that. So you might have paid for it out of a miscellaneous revenue in the past, right. but now you're gonna pay for it out of a specific line that's been created over that time period. So that, that's those changes that take place constantly um, within the business area. Okay, I understand that. She said, when you write gold, you just so you're moving stuff around. Um, is that the same, I guess, for the very bottom brackets, when you start with budget and fund balance, operating budget, down to total, total operating budget. So first line there, you have zero for the budget, fund balance, operating budget, and it goes to 741000 mm -hmm. Is that something else that was just slid, I guess, from? And that's money that needs to be budgeted each year to balance the next year's budget. So you, you never want it to be zero because that means that you're ending your balance with zero and they don't want you ending the school year with zero dollars in the account. Um, that's your carryover. That's your carryover, but you need it to balance uh, the budget. If you don't have that, you would have a $700,000 to fall within the district. Okay, and the withdrawal from caps and local shares went from 225 to zero, 1.5 that's, that's us building our money, and that's that local share that you're now gonna be putting out for the rock grants. So we had zero and we got it to 1.5 million? We didn't withdraw any money. So we kept it in the capital reserve account. So, so the 225, you and you put in air conditioners throughout the district over at the elementary schools. You withdrew money from your capital reserves into capital projects to, to fulfill that. You then had to then build your funds up last year because you had that $1.5 million amount that you needed to show for your local share. So when we send our grant off to the state, they're gonna see that we have our local share and they'll allow the project to begin and they'll start reimbursing us their end. So that way we'll the be local share is almost like as you, as you accumulate it, the state matches it. Depending on the grant, yes. But, so when you, when you look at that operating, Joe, yeah. that $741,000, so do you, when you roll that money over, how long is, because obviously it's operating, it's operable money. How long does that amount carry? How long do you calculate that to carry till the money comes to hit? Do you follow what I'm saying? So is that like the amount of bills that'll hit within the first 30 days so that 
I think this is like the one question I kept asking when I got so, here. So, you what I'm yeah, I do. So, as of right now, that's the amount of money that was necessary in prior years to balance the budget. So the thing is, you always want to manage that because you don't want that to become too much. You don't want that to be too little. Because they'll also call you on that when you submit your budget, if it was zero. So I brought it down, to, so the county VA was playing around because I was the first one in the office. So he decided to bring it down to zero to show where we were putting money into capital reserves. That's something you don't show on a budget. That's something you do once you know what you have and all of your expenses have been paid out, then you can move money that way. It brought me this down to zero, which you never want to end the year showing that you have zero dollars in the bank. Because the thing is, with taxes being brought in, many times you might be relying on that money, but you're also floating that money straight across. It's a general fund. So although it's allocated in different areas, it's one big pot. And you want to make sure that the cash you have in bank is going to cover everything that you need across the board. Um, and that on come June 30th, we close out which means we're able to roll everything over from our current budget to next year's. So the first number I'm going to be looking for at that end of the year budget, at the end of this current year, June 30th, is going to be pulling out that 741. Because that's what's balancing next year's budget to make sure that we have enough money in our accounts. And then from there, that's where we talked about the fact that we're depleting our reserve accounts to nothing to support the capital projects of the Rod Grants. So we now want to start building those up again so that way if something comes up or we have older buildings, we've discussed this, there's going to be changes and upgrades that we're going to need to make and there's going to be another rock grant eventually and that's where we'll then increase that money. Did that answer your question? Yes, to some degree. You're asking the same thing, I mean, it sounds like 741 to 1.5 are both carryover funds basically. Yeah. Right? Yeah, but yeah. that 741 is saying that that's what you need to float on the interim of the money coming in for the new budget. So in essence, there has to be a amount of bills in to order make for, it balance. In order for me to cover in order for me to cover everything on my budget, right. I need to have at least right. a seven hundred and forty one dollar right. thousand dollar balance yeah. at the end of this year. Does that go up year to year or change or does it changes from year to year and that's how you want to manage that. Percentage or is it percentage base or a dollar amount? It's a dollar amount, but it depends on how you put money into, into your reserve accounts moving forward. So you always want to manage it. Like, you wouldn't want this number to be over, over where it currently is by too much. You don't want it to get to $1.5 million that you need to fill your budget for the next year. Like, do you get what I mean, though? So you want to manage that, and you don't want it to get out of control, which is why it's so important to make sure that we're constantly looking at our budget, where our money is, and what we need to go from year to year. Continuing down with the, the, this, the total, so total, total operating budget 14. The next page, page three, continues on the same thing. That's all income, correct? Here's the 14.5. Money coming in those year grants. So this is all grants, page three. Well, actually, I'm sorry. I'll do words about reviews from federal sources right there. If you look up top, tuition preschool, that's what we were asking about, first one. Zero, zero, 15,000. So that money was now moved under the specific preschool tuition line for the 15, 16 schools. So total tuition, really that total tuition should never exist and it should have been a tuition preschool. Yes. Before right. it was just listed under total tuition, yes. And then that's the number because it's from 14, 15, okay. I guess that makes, all right. Multiple sources. Now that's the only thing because like most of these on this page with the exception of Title one and Title two, and I guess the total revenues from federal, all pretty much in line across the three things. They seem like they didn't change much. Correct. What's Title one and Title two? Title well, one. Do we, that's what you said. That's federal money for for students who qualify for free and reduced lunch. Yeah. So you had a lot of carryover. So when I came in, I want to say there was between forty-five and sixty thousand dollars of unspent money. You can only carry money over for one year and then you lose the money altogether. So that was our 13, 14. That was the first year we were here, 13, 14. So total one and two are both reduced lunches? The amount that you receive is based on reduced lunches. The way students qualify is based on need. Yeah. Meaning, they go back and say, no, it's not income. The way that they qualify is based on academics and how they perform. 
the amount you receive is based on income. It's two separate qualifications. So the total one is, I guess, household income. I think of they're both household income. That's what it's based on. However, in Title I, students are identified who need extra support. So just because Angel's parents make $200,000 a year, if she's not doing well in her school, in her, in her academics, she would qualify for Title I support based on teacher recommendation, based on low test scores, and based on need. I, I don't agree with our numbers there. We need to, um, I don't care if I have to talk to the parents and hand out um, those lunch forms because I know a lot of people don't fill them out just because um, because because they're they don't want people to know their business mm -hmm. like their number for example like I know I called you and answered the numbers because see for sale work but my, just my salary alone with the family for put me because I, I would not be embarrassed to get reduced lunch if I needed it you know see what I'm saying but that's mm -hmm. me but other people I feel like in this town you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of families in this town where there's only one person working. Right. I honestly I don't know how they do it, but but they do it, and I feel like they're not filling out the paperwork. Well, what what is the? Because if they fill out the paperwork, yeah. we would get more funding. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah. And for example, I um, texted uh, Dr. McCarran because Belmar is um, giving a has a summer program. And I was like, well, why does Belmar have a summer program and not us? But so I made them do a little bit of research for us. And it was because they're at 50. No, they have a school wide program because they're at over 50%. They're over 50% free and reduced lunch, which means they're now school wide, which means they get a ton more money. Right. And we're at 30. Well, and we're at, no. We're, we, I thought we were at 30 something. We're where? Free, free and reduced, we're at 36. Round up to 37. You know what you may want to do is because, like, I'll be honest, we're, I don't, I don't know what the guide, what are the guidelines to get a reduced lunch? It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a number. Right. It's like a, you have to look at your to by family size. Some people may believe they're not even eligible for it. Right, they, but they, but they are. Right, like I, I, I might be eligible for it. I don't. You're not eligible for it. Because you make more than me. You're not eligible for it. But point is, people might not even know. Yeah, so that's so that's title one. That's all that uh, that is your. But we. But I'm just saying, like, I would like to do a little. I'm not saying that you didn't. I'm just saying, like, I would like to do a little bit more. Do maybe make that a poor goal to do. You know, a little bit yeah. more due diligence. Well, and make we sure did have a couple complaints about the number of forms that were sent home because I think we sent home three forms this year. One went out in the beginning of the summer packet with every student. One went home on the first day of school, and then we also had it set up at back to school night. What was your complaint there? The complaint was that we were sending home too much paper. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm, I'm the least amount of a tree killer, but you know. So that's how we get funding, so that's why we wanted to make sure that. But I think that maybe the if they think, did you explain to them why we were trying to do yes. that? Yes. Okay, and did they still have a complaint? No. Okay. Fine after that. So then we so just need to make sure that they know why we're doing that. I mean, I'm just saying that if everybody did it, and we got the numbers. Our numbers may not be as high as Belmar's, but our numbers probably, I would say, most likely, absolutely, positively would go up, and that would give us more funding. That would enable us to give our students more programs, Agreed. more more money to do things with. Right. Whether it's a summer program or not. Because something happened from 13 to 15 that went down to 50,000. I don't know what it is. It's the allocation carryover. Is it not, Sean? They didn't spend the money. There was money so, that, that they lost. They had it at some point. They they know what what happened. Happened. But they never spent it. Where I was so one, I, I say spend it on the students. Why didn't they spend it? So let's say they were getting let's say they were getting forty five thousand every year and they were only spending twenty five. We're really gonna carry twenty. You still have another forty five, you have sixty five thousand. So if it's not spent by the district every year, you use it or you lose it, and you can only carry it for one year. So for me, I'm the business administrator, but I'm also the curriculum person who deals with grants. So right now, I think like most of our grants are down to 100, if not zeroed out, Absolutely. because I would purchase Absolutely. things and then split it between two account ones to support that. So my, again, uh, when you say they didn't spend it, so that's money that you get for reduced lunches, and if you're not used on reduced lunches, you are allowed it's to use It's not used other, to support programming support for students. Program. Not, not about reduced, not anything about lunches, it's about Remediation. It's about math. It's about you know. It's, it's, it's language arts. It's whatever we whatever you know. There's a so certain things. Have, so we have money that we can spend. And we <clears throat>
in some cases. Now, last year, all that rollover money that we had from the year prior that wasn't spent, we spent a ton of money. We more. can pay, t we can pay remedial <laughs> teachers out of that. We can do all of that. There's a lot of things we can do with that money. Yeah, just like I said, we just spent that. Um, but that's why moving forward, all the money has been spent and everything's been allocated for where it needs to go. But with that being said, again, there were four people. So, and the, again, if it wasn't allocated to the right spot, how would you know it was in that bucket to spend? So, if you didn't allocate it to the rights up front, and you, it didn't matter over here, how could you track it over there? I, I mean, I don't know. Or if the right today. people weren't informed that that money was sitting exactly. there to spend, it's not going to get spent. Right, that's what I'm, I'm saying. Telling, you I'm pretty much telling time. myself I have this amount of money to spend because I know what's in the budget. Right. And then I'll talk to the principals at Mark and we'll spend the money. But So, it's a little bit different <coughs> process now because. I'm on both yes, sides of well, it. Well, but I think that's the advantage yes. we have. I think that's the advantage we have now. We did not have a, a supervisor of curriculum instruction, so we brought on Dr. McCarran. And I think him sitting in the position he is, seeing the funds that's coming in, overlooking all curriculum, he knows where we need money and how we can help the kids. And you're not going to see that happening now. I mean, I apologize, but it, it, so there is a process in place now instead of a person now. So I'm just asking if Dr. McCarran because he's good at what he does, where he get a promotion and leave somewhere, the person that will come in behind him, there's a process in place that it wouldn't... To be honest with you, that's general grant funding. So, for example, that's the basic training right. from the state on a regular basis. Right. You're to spend that's your grant. You're to spend your funding on a yearly so, yeah. basis. So, basically, anybody that will come in in your position... They should be attending the same kind of one director meetings that I attend. Okay. Just like as a curriculum person, as a business okay. administrator, um, that's all. That's special education, all those areas, all right. that money has to be spent. But we're not going to let you go. I just wanted to check on the right list. The lights are still on. I don't have any questions for five more minutes. I should care. Um, and then going through total time, I'm going to just. Adrian. Just on page three. I'm going to write down line by line. So I'm going to guess that it seem, would seem like the total thing may have been the same thing. So total revenues from federal sources, total grants and entitlements, the big decline in those two would possibly be the same thing. I want to use, you know, go from 500,000 to 387, and then from 600 down to 541. Correct. It's a $60,000 difference. So Where is that on page three? Page three. 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 three? If you look at the third to last line. We had $60,000 extra last year. So when you look at the reading libraries we purchased to you. provide resources, K-8, um, we now have guided reading materials for teachers, so it sets six books, um, different levels, so that way they can do their small group instruction. Um, looking at different math programs we have to offer for intervention and remediation for students. Um, that's where all that money is coming from. Now, will we have an opportunity to build those back up now? No. Or once you lose it, it's going forever. And the thing is that they tell you to reduce by 20% because they don't guarantee the same amount each year. How did it get up that high to begin with that? Because of rollover money. So, for example, when you look at those things, you see it's 600, that it's, where is it? 603,000 in 1415 down rollover. to 541. If that's rollover money, then would that show zero at the end? Each year you rolled over different money. It's not, it's combined. So, this year we had 541 because I spent the extra carryover from last year. And I didn't spend it on a staff member because you, that's not smart to do. I spent it on one-time materials, which would be the reading libraries across all three buildings. So that 541 carryover is separate from the 741. That 541 is simply the amount we received this year, period. That's flat. So the next that, year, that would show 541 again? Correct. Now, see how also it says actual revised anticipated. This 541, you might look at next year. So let's say I have the non-public because they get money also. It will spend twenty thousand dollars. That money might move from five forty one to five sixty one. Right. Because it's then going to turn into your revised. So that's it's being revised. So as of right now, if we spend all of our grant money, that's anticipated what we should be receiving. And then I gotta imagine the next couple of, and I don't want to stop, but the next couple pages, so pages four money spent. Five everything that the appropriate. That's all that's all money that went out. Uh -huh. Just example, like the bilingual education, I'm guessing we didn't have that last year or we had it the year before. 
also where the money is allocated and how you define, because there's ELL, there's ESL, and there's bilingual education. So it all is based on the number of students you're serving within the district, which means you then need to allocate those funds respectively for those areas. She was also an administrator. Not, not technically. Okay. She was a former administrator who. I'm just saying that could have been how why it was classified differently. I don't know. And sometimes if you're looking for other ways to support, you might take it from other line areas. since we're not going to have time because um, I'm going to uh, adjourn here during with our agenda our regular public you need to ask any question you want to during the meeting because we didn't have a work session okay anything that you have I, I encourage questions any questions you may have please okay. so we're going to take a five minute break. I need a motion I need a motion Hold on a second. I'm there. I'm there. I'm there. I'm there. <laughs> Look, he doesn't let me finish sentences either. You thought it was just you. Thought it was just you. It's me too. I need a I need a motion to approve the 2015-2016 proposed budget. There, the budget. Found with that motion. Motion made by Chaz. Seconded by Patty. Are there any further questions? <clears throat> Roll call. Mrs. Dare. Yes. Mrs. Beebe. Yes. Mrs. Davidson. Yes. Mr. Pedliazzo. Yes. Ms. Baldwin? Yes. Ms. Anderson? Yes. Mr. Buffett? Yes. Ms. Barry? Yes. Motion passes. I also need a motion to adjourn so we can have a five minute recess before our regularly scheduled meeting. I'll make the motion to adjourn. Second. Motion made by Patty, seconded by Naomi. All in favor? Aye. Ayes have it. 655. This uh, budget meeting.